He's someone that has uh, been around this industry for a long time. He was the co-founder of Lending Club, but then he decided he wanted a real challenge and he moved to China to start a fintech platform over there. Now, certainly not uh, the easiest place to do business, but he has grown his company, Dianrong, into one of the leaders in the largest market in the world. It's truly an amazing success story. And now today he's, gonna, he's, got, a, he's got a big announcement to make today. And uh, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Sol Hatayt, the CEO of Dianrong. <laughs> It's a pleasure to be here. It's always good and exciting to be at Lendit. Um, we do have a big announcement to share with you today, but before I start, I would like to give you a small introduction of uh, DNRO. So uh, we originate about $300 million of loans every month. Uh, these loans are 25% consumer finance and the rest is SMEs. So, so far we have originated uh, 26 billion RMB. And if you would have invested in every loan we have originated so far, you will end up with a default rate of 1.2%. But if you base it on the bank number, that number will be 2.46%. So, all our loans are funded by our retail lenders. We have 3.7 million of them. Yes, you heard it right. We have 3.7 million lenders. They come to our website and they invest small amounts. We always end up with 20 to 30% more capital than assets. In fact, 80% of our customers are repeat customers. All of this is made possible by our employees, but in particular, our 600 engineering team that keeps innovating day after day. So we were named top three company in China, but there are a few things that we don't compromise on which is compliance, transparency, and technology. And in those categories, we were named number one. So as uh, Peter mentioned, we have a big, uh, major announcement to make today. And I would like to share this announcement with you as a story of how we innovate inside of DRL. So I would like to start the story with things that are very close to you. The products that you use, whether it's your car or your mobile phone, we are very dependent on these products. We understand the genius behind designing them, and we appreciate a lot the people that make them. But there is actually another side of this story, which is the manufacturing of these products. So if you open your iPhone, for example, it's gonna look like this. It's 100 components, different levels of complexity from one to another, but there are some small components that are so simple for example, if you focus on the piece that you use to adjust your phone, without that being available, your iPhone 7 is not gonna be delivered on time. And that causes a big nightmare to the big manufacturers where they try to meet certain releases. So that piece actually is made by a company that is called Fuchanda. This company is based in Shenzhen, and they have about 2,000 people. 2,000 people in China is considered medium size company. So the business model is simple. They will get a purchase order and they will make these pieces in millions uh, and then they will ship them. Then they have to wait. They can wait 90 days, they can wait 100 days, they can also wait six to nine months to get paid. And the time they have to wait is really dependent on when the end product is shipped. So they are continuously in need of capital. Their business is very random. So they need to access capital to keep things going. Otherwise, the 2,000 employees they have, they're not gonna be able to pay them, and they have to shut down. And it does happen in China all the time. So they try to get capital from the same places you and I will go to get capital from. A bank will reject them because they don't have any collaterals. A FinTech company like ourselves will also reject them because they don't have enough data for us to create a consistent story about their credit worthiness. So they are left with the shadow banking, which will charge them very high interest rates. And that is really sad, because you have a company that participates in one of the biggest innovation our civilization have ever created, Apple products, but can't get funded. It's a failure of the system. It's a failure of the infrastructure. 
And that is what we do at Dearnorm. We focus on solving these infrastructure problems. So we decided that we're going to create a solution for this. And we tried to investigate. And in our investigation, we ended up immediately connecting with Jack Lee, who's sitting here with us today. So Jack Lee is the CEO of uh, FinCon, which is the captive finance company that is created with the mission to facilitate supply chain finance funding for Foxconn suppliers and their customers, smaller customers. So if you don't know, Foxconn is the world's largest electronics manufacturer. It makes your laptop, it makes uh, your mobile phones, it makes it for multiple uh, different uh, uh, brand names. So, so when I met Jack the first day, I remember very well, I told him, hey Jack, uh, I have a problem. This company called Fuchanda, I need to connect it back to Foxconn so I can feel comfortable to give them a loan. Jack smiled and he said, yes, right. I have 150,000 of them. When you find out how to do it, let me know. So, so immediately we realized that this is a much bigger problem than us and we knew that alone we cannot fix it. So we created two working groups one from his team and one from us. And to explain really what the problem is, uh, which was completely unknown to me at the beginning, is to understand how the chain works. So, so before, I used to understand account payables is a very easy business. Any bank will do it. So you show up with an account payable to any bank, they will give you a discount of five or 6%. And then, to my surprise, suppliers are not created equally. So think about the car seat or the dashboard in your Ford car. There are a lot of people that supply to somebody who supplies to someone who supplies to someone. So that account payable that the bank relies on as a collateral is only left at the first level, which means they can only fund the first level. FinCon has been helping banks to streamline that process. And with everything that they've done, they can only get to 10 or 15% of the whole supply chain, which leaves 85% of the supply chain unfunded. The chain in the supply chain is broken. And that's why you have to wait in lines before you get your iPhone products, because every time, lack of capital for these small suppliers will delay the whole project. So we worked on this and we spent 18 months. We tried multiple solutions, some of them better than others, but really the breakthrough happened when we start working with blockchain. That is really the day we realized that all the issues that we had about trust, we can solve them using blockchain. So today, I'm very happy to announce that Diarno and Fincom have came up with a solution that will cover 100% of the supply chain. What does it mean? It means if you are using our solution, we guarantee you funding. It doesn't matter how small you are. It doesn't matter how often do you need it. And your application process takes a couple of hours instead of taking weeks, which happens with the bank. We also guarantee you that the rates that you're going to pay are going to be very, very similar to the rates that first level supplier pays. Whether you're borrowing $100 million or $100,000, you get similar service. How does it work? I think the real problem with the traditional solution of the account payable is that the relationship is really kept between the core company and the level one supplier. So what they have is a collateral, and they have only two options to act on it. They can either sit on it until the due days arrives and they get paid from the enterprise, or they pass it to the bank. If they pass it to the bank, the whole information has gone out of the chain, and nobody knows what's gonna happen when they deal with smaller supplier. So our solution, which is simple in the way it is, but complex in the technology behind it, is to intercept that account payable that instead of going directly from the core company to level one, we take it through our platform. So 
we offer to level one supplier a much efficient account payable, call it a blockchain account payable, that can help them with, this cash, with their cash flow. Originally, if they have a $300 million account payable and they need $5 million, the only thing they can do is to take the whole $300 million and give it to a bank and get cash. It is horrible for their cash flow strategies. With our solution, they can decide how much of that dynamic blockchain account payable they can pass. So we created a pricing model and a risk model that allows the pricing of the assets to become universal. The pricing model is a combination of the amount they are borrowing and the time until it gets to the due date. The solution itself does not provide funding, but it provides asset acquisition for lenders. And who are these lenders? FinCon is one of them, Diano is one of them, but it's also inclusive of all the banks that prior to our solution can only do 15%. Now we expand for them to do the whole 100%. So I use the word asset acquisition, but to be really exact, I should call it asset creation. Before our solution, level two, level three, and level four did not exist as a borrower. Nobody was giving them capital. So we're talking here about asset creation. So really everyone benefits. Uh, in the case of Diano, our 3.7 million lenders, they benefit from the fact that they get a short duration loans, uh, they, create, they, they get access to a high liquidity investment product. The banks, as I mentioned, increase their addressable market. The suppliers, obviously, they get capital, so they can produce uh, better. But the companies, or the core companies, are the biggest beneficiaries of the system. Uh, the obvious one is that they will be more in control of the releases because their small suppliers are getting funded. But as, as, as a positive side effect to our solution is that they will get to know who is working on their project. I call it KYS, know your supplier. So, so we all know some, some PR disasters that happened. It's actually, it's more than a PR because people did die where, where, where a garment company outsource a project to someone who outsources to someone in Vietnam and then it goes to Bangladesh and then suddenly you have a factory collapsing on people and the factory or the, 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 the brand name comes out and says, I had no idea these people were working on my projects. With our blockchain solution, because we capture information as it goes from level to level, we will be able to show to the CFO of the company at any given time who is working on their project. We can even tell them business intelligence about where the chain is not efficient enough. Maybe they have to have more companies like Fuchanda to create more of that small device because that's what delays the releases last time. So it's no secret that supply chain finance is a huge business. And not to get completely disoriented, we decided to focus on two industries, car companies or car manufacturing and electronics. And the reason why we decided to focus on these two because they are very similar. There's a lot to do in garment industry and real estate and plenty of other stuff. But our solution focuses mainly on these two industries. So I repeat again, our announcement today is Chain Finance. That's the name of the solution. It's the first blockchain solution serving supply chain finance. And it's an inclusive system in the sense that it includes all type of companies, banks, and all different lenders. And it is also geographically agnostic. See, in our solution, we don't rely on the Credit Bureau of China. We don't rely on the payment systems of China. By itself, with the help of blockchain, we are creating an infrastructure for this example, which means that we can easily take our solution to Mexico if Ford end up deciding that the manufacturing of the cars are gonna be there or bring it back to the US if Ford changes their mind and decided to make manufacturing of the cars here. So it is by itself an infrastructure. 
So that's what we do every day at the Arnold. That's how uh, we, we innovate. We focus more on infrastructure instead of focusing on uh, products or uh, very strict processes. Uh, before I leave you today, I would like to share uh, personal comments. It's, it's exactly 10 years since, since I wrote the first line of code. I can see John Donovan here uh, when, when, when we started Landing Club. So I did spend five years building Landing Club, and I did spend five years building uh, the Arnold. It has been wonderful. 10 years is, is a little bit uh, around 25% of my life. So the only thing I really know is, is FinTech. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm very proud of, of, of what the industry has done today, and it has been really good. Not great, but it has been really good. So I would like it to be great. So uh, contrary to what a lot of people are saying, we are, very, we are doing very, very well with regulations. It's actually whether we're talking about China or in the US, regulators are supporting the industry, and they are understanding the industry, and they are pushing uh, for it very well. We are doing very well in risk management. We have some issues with some companies, but in large, majority of the companies are still delivering a good quality uh, portfolios. We are doing so-so with the press uh, because we have a very confusing message. One day we want to replace banks, and the other day we're going to work with banks. Uh, one day we want to do balance sheets, and another say. So, so all of these are good ideas, but um, Thanks God we have Lendit that offers us uh, a platform so we can train ourselves to put the message together. But there, is, but there is one pillar of FinTech that is very close to my heart that I really don't want it to see being neglected, and that is technology. So I would love to see more people from a technology background participate in these companies. I think for the last couple of years, we start to hear more about finance than technology. So finance is great, but I don't think as FinTech we can bring in to finance what finance has brought to itself. With technology, we can make a difference. I understand how CEOs and exec teams are under the pressure of delivering numbers and delivering revenue, but if you don't have a technology team. If you don't have that good CTO, I recommend that you go look for him and roll the red carpet for him and bring him to the team. Because when people ask me, what is the difference between a finance company and a fintech company? I think the real answer is not how big is your technology team is, but how much your technology team can affect the decisions. So if you have exact meeting and you don't have representation from your technology team, you're not a fintech company. So as they say, or as Kevin Costner says, if you have that team and if they build it, customers will come. Thank you. <laughs>